When they first told me I had prostate cancer, it's, it took me off my feet. Radiation, it's a scary word uh, if you don't know what uh, it entails. It came down to between uh, surgery and radiation and the uh, rates for cure were uh, similar. So I thought this was a, a safer course. It's my third bout with cancer and I know things have to be done if you want to stay alive. So here we are. <laughs> Radiation therapy plays a very important role in terms of cancer care overall. It's one of the three main approaches to treatment, the other two being surgery and medical oncology using different systemic drugs like chemotherapy. Radiation is a non-invasive treatment. Radiation treatments are given on a daily basis with external equipment that basically passes the radiation through you. It's like a high energy x-ray. It's something that you don't feel. When the radiation hits the cancer cells, it causes damage that it can't repair, and then they either die or basically do not grow back, and that's essentially how the radiation works. Prostate cancer is a very common malignancy. Early stage prostate cancer has cure rates well in excess of 80 and maybe even in excess of 90% at five years, and those success rates are maintained beyond five years. We have lots of ways to treat prostate cancer. We traditionally in the past did surgery and only the men who were turned down for surgery ended up getting radiation. In the last decade, we've shown that the cure rate with radiation is the same as it is with surgery. The side effects are typically much less significant. So radiation has become one of the options for management of prostate cancer as a definitive treatment with the intent of cure. These are the nine beams before they start to change shape, the intensity modulation that I described to you originally. This is the shape. As part of a prostate cancer consult, we also discuss other treatment options. The implantation of radioactive sources in the prostate, either on a permanent or temporary basis, is called brachytherapy. And this radiation implant has been shown over the last 30 years to be a very effective and successful way of managing certain prostate cancers. It's a very successful, well-tolerated, uh, excellent modality of therapy in selected low-risk patients. I think there are a lot of options. I chose radiation because of the research I did. I think the more information that you get, the better off you are. Good to see you. Yep, how are you? When you first come to the Radiation Oncology Center, it's very helpful to bring somebody with you. Another set of ears to hear the information is always very valuable for you. So it's very important that you ask questions repeatedly throughout your entire care to make sure that you're well informed and can make the best decision for yourself. The different uh, treatment options include surgery and radiation and combinations of hormones with the radiation. And after all of this review, you've decided to go ahead with the radiation just to the prostate. When we've reached a decision to go ahead and proceed with radiation to the prostate, we have a conversation with the patient about the details of how that treatment is going to be delivered, and we typically use image-guided radiotherapy on a daily basis. The prostate is a moving target within the pelvis. It shifts position a little bit, about a half an inch in each direction, depending on the adjacent organ physiology. So typically we put little markers, seeds, that are put in most commonly by the urologist, and then each day before we treat the patient, we image them to determine where those markers are. Once the markers have been placed, the patient comes to the radiation department and has a CT simulation. So you're going to be on your back, yep. laying on a pillow. When a patient comes in for simulation for prostate cancer, they will be asked to have a full bladder. We'd like to have about the same size every day. They'll be laying on their back with their hands comfortably on their chest. Their legs will be relaxed during the prostate cancer simulation. Patients may be exposed in their pelvis area, but we are mindful of their privacy and uncover them only at times that we need to. The patients will receive tattoos to help the alignment for their treatments. It's a guide for the radiation. They're just tiny little dots looking just like little freckles. All done. 
Once the patient is in position, we will do a CT scan to take images of the treatment area. So the physicians and the dosimetrists can use those images to make the treatment plan to determine the treatment fields and the treatment angles and dosing. This is from the top. A medical dosimetrist is a professional that works with us as part of a multidisciplinary team to help ensure that the radiation dose delivery is in the safest way possible to cover what we want to for treating the cancer and to limit the risk of any side effects for normal parts of the body. The anatomy and the details of how we design the treatment has changed quite a lot. We now have very precise atlases that are defining how to target the correct structures with the radiation doses and more importantly how to avoid the adjacent structures and that has translated into a higher cure rate with dramatically less side effects than we had even just 10 years ago. When a patient comes in for their daily radiation treatment, their radiation therapy team will do a double check, make sure that it's the right patient, the right treatment, and then they're going to be put into the same position as their simulation, which is a reproducible, comfortable position that was established on their first day. For prostate patients, we take a few extra steps in reproducing their daily treatments. In addition to the immobilization externally, we use bladder filling and rectal emptying as immobilization internally to make the prostate in the same position on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, here we go. So for the patient, what that means is it's likely they will have to drink a certain amount of water in order to fill the bladder the same every day. And in terms of emptying their bowels on a consistent basis, patients may need to adjust their diet or their daily routines. The patient can expect the machine to rotate around them. They'll hear some buzzing and clicking noise. Nothing will ever touch them and they won't feel a thing. The actual treatment time is brief. When you get into the room, it's quite a uh, setup to say the least. And the process is painless. It's very quick. I did not feel anything. Sometimes I would go home and tell my wife, I say, I hope this is working because I never feel anything. When we give radiation on a daily basis, you don't notice anything in the way of side effects. Most commonly, as treatment continues, men will start to notice some urinary changes where there's slowing of urinary function. Frequency may increase and also there may be some changes either with gas or a change in bowel movements that may happen as treatment continues. We have medications that will reduce the irritation of the bladder and typically alleviate those symptoms. Somewhere around half the patients who get radiated have decreased erections a year or two after the radiation is complete. Fortunately, the medications often are very helpful in the radiation-caused impotence, and we very commonly prescribe them. I am feeling great. I'm feeling optimistic. I believe that I got the best treatment, and I believe that things worked out great. People with cancer can be cured. That is, their cancer goes away, never comes back. And these days, that can be accomplished in a way that subjects them to a very low risk of any meaningful side effects. When I came in every day, I feel like I was doing all I can to do my part to help fight prostate cancer. We have a part to pay, and I think I did everything that I could possibly do to fight that prostate cancer. Every day I'm here, I am fighting cancer. I'm not, I can't run a marathon, but I am feeling good, and my hopes are that I'm going to be cancer-free for the rest of my life. <laughs>